Good morning, everybody. Please sit down. And a very warm welcome on another beautiful sunny day. It's really lovely. Um, Welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this, the third Sunday after Trinity. Um, An extra special welcome if you're joining us for the first time today. And um, if you are, we hope that this will be an important step on your journey of faith, wherever you might be on that. And welcome to everybody at home for joining us on Zoom as well. So I'll give so you a wave give too. Wave okay. Yeah, give them a wave. Yeah, <laughs> Lovely. Oh. I'll have a, a moment of quiet as we prepare to meet with God in this service this morning. The Lord be with you. And please stand for our first hymn this morning, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. And it's Mission Praise 111 if you prefer to use the hymn book. now to make our confession to God. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand if that's comfortable for you, and we'll say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit down for our first reading. The first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What's the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, His mother got a wife for him from Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 1b, verse 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised in Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives He lives in God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able. We're going to now sing Faithful One, and it's in the blue St. John's book here, number 13. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. 
And this morning's Gospel reading comes from chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers, and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. (coughs) Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. (coughs) Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. Well, that was a powerful Gospel reading. Jesus telling his 12 disciples that he has come not in peace, but with a sword, and that he intends to tear families apart, turning sons against fathers, daughters against mothers. These are strong words indeed. This is definitely not one of those Bible readings that send you back out into the world on a Sunday morning feeling loved and comforted. It's much more likely to have you quaking in your boots, although perhaps not so much as I was when I realized I was going to have to preach on this text. Where was I going to begin? This isn't my perception of Jesus at all. Can this really be the same Jesus who proclaims good news to the poor, who brings liberation to the oppressed, who commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves? This description of Jesus' conversation with his disciples seems to be totally out of character to me, completely at odds with what Jesus is about. But these words that we've heard this morning have been given to us completely out of context. There was no service here last week. There was a a wonderful service in the town centre. But if there had been a service last week, we'd have heard Jesus commissioning his disciples to go out and do his work, to tell the lost sheep of Israel the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near, to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, and cast out demons. And he also starts to warn his disciples that their task will not be an easy one. He says, I'm sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. There's every likelihood that they will be persecuted for their faith in him. And today's passage continues this warning. Jesus wants his disciples to be under no illusion about what they're facing. He wants them to know the reality of being a disciple. What it will mean to be someone who brings the good news of Jesus out from the dark into the light. Who doesn't just quietly whisper it, to those who are keen to know more, but who will shout it out from the rooftops so that everyone can hear. And Jesus makes it clear that the disciples need to continue this work no matter what response they might receive. And they will encounter opposition and resistance, but he simply tells them, if you're persecuted in one town, then just move on to the next. In their attempts to grow God's kingdom, the disciples will be challenging the status quo of their society threatening the rule of the Roman Empire. So there'll be people in power who will react violently to protect their own positions. But what Jesus is saying to those 12 disciples applies to all of us as well. 
We're also his disciples, and we face challenges to our discipleship today. Thankfully, living in this country at this time, it's extremely unlikely that we'll be persecuted for our beliefs. But there are Christians throughout the world for whom this is a very real risk. Last year, it was estimated that 360 million Christians experienced high levels of persecution or discrimination, and 6,000 of them were killed for their faith. 360 million, that's more than five times the total population of the UK. And these numbers are increasing year on year. But even though the challenges we here at St. John's face are not so extreme, being a follower of Jesus, being a Christian, isn't always plain sailing. If God's kingdom is to indeed come on earth as it is in heaven, we need to share this good news with others. It's not something that's just for us. But do we proclaim the good news about Jesus from the rooftops? Or do we hold back? It's not that easy, is it? All sorts of things put us off sharing this information with others. Maybe we're frightened of their response. Will they reject us? Perhaps they'll think we're a bit odd. Will they be angry with us? And then there's the worry that they might ask us a question about our faith that we can't answer. So for whatever reason, we continue to keep quiet. A couple of weeks ago, I was at a meeting of Macri, and Macri is the name of the group that's working on ideas to revitalize the Anglican churches in Macclesfield. And at that meeting, I heard a very interesting statistic. There are currently nine Anglican churches in Macclesfield with a combined congregation of about 600 people. But throughout the area, throughout this area, there are 57,000 people who have no association of any kind with any Christian church. Why? Why are so many people not feeling any connection to the church? So thinking about that, I'm going to ask a question about this particular church. And don't worry, I'm not going to revert to teacher mode and ask you to share your answers or put your hands up. So just keep your, keep your reaction in your head. But here's a question. Would you say that St. John's Church is best described as a welcoming church or as an inviting church? Welcoming or inviting? Perhaps welcoming is a bit easier to do, warmly greeting new people who come to a service and chatting with them over coffee afterwards. But we seem to find it much harder to invite people to come and join us. And it's relatively rare for people to spontaneously decide to come to a church. And this means that however welcoming we might be, we don't often tend to get that many opportunities to dem demonstrate these skills. Yet if God's kingdom is to grow, we need to be inviting people in. So being a disciple of Jesus requires us to have courage and resilience. Courage to overcome our fears and worries and to engage in conversations with people about our faith. And the resilience to withstand rejection and opposition. And we can be supported and encouraged in this work through the knowledge of God's immense love for each one of us. Something Jesus reminded his disciples about amidst his warnings to them. He says, are you not two sparrows sold to a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. God does love all of us very deeply. He knows every detail about us, including all our worries and fears. But through the Holy Spirit, he can help us to reach out to others so that his kingdom may flourish here on earth. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us strength and confidence, to fill us with the words that we need to share the joy of God's unfailing love with others. And let each one of us do whatever we can to bring the good news out from the darkness into the light. Amen. <laughs> Shall we stand and say the creed together? <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs>
we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God with true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit down and we, as um, Crawford leads us in prayer. The response is a standard response this morning. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, the response is here, our prayer. Lord of the answer, the answer to our prayers, persuade us to think about what we are asking. We intercede for others, petition for ourselves, and request many things. Yet we seldom consider the means and the consequences. Guide us to ask for others what we ourselves are prepared to strive to give and do for others. For we are your hands and feet, the members of your body, the church. May what we ask for ourselves, knowing clearly what we ask, persuade and influence us that what we do for others, we do for ourselves and in cooperation with you. Let our asking in your name flow out of and into worship and praise and thanksgiving for all you are and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Holy God, you have given us your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly life. Give us the grace to thankfully receive this wonderful gift and to always strive ourselves to follow the example of his holy life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, we pray for the church, both here in St. John's and St. Thomas's, and the church throughout the world. We pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may go forward in unity and strength. Help us to respect the beliefs of others, even if we do not share them. To celebrate what we have in common and to accept our differences, remembering that we are all created in your image. Guide us all in our ministries as we live each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Creator God, we pray for people in parts of the world where life is precarious, whether through disaster, poverty, disease, or war. We pray for those that work and lobby to hasten the time when there is peace on earth and goodwill between all people. We pray for our precious world. Help us to be good and thoughtful stewards 
so that we can pass it on in good order to the generations yet to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Father God, we pray today for our friends, our families, and our Christian community, that united by our common baptism, we, all, we may always welcome the newcomer, the stranger, and all who are vulnerable. Help us always to follow Jesus' words and advice on hospitality and generous giving, and realize that accepting someone's help is as valuable in service of you as giving someone help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and for those who care for them. For children in foster care, that they may find kind, loving, permanent families to care for them. For foster families, that they may find strength to trust to the love and care of others, those they have grown to love. We pray for the sick, for those who mourn, for those without faith, hope or love. In our church community here, we remember the sick. Avril Arrowsmith, Michael Luca, James Smith, son Su Sue's son Edward, Sylvia Burgess and her daughter. And the mourning Gail and her sister and their families, mourning the loss of a mother and grandmother. Comfort them all with the knowledge of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, we remember before you those who have died and those who are bereaved by their passing. We give back to you, Lord, those whom you gave to us, remembering that your son taught us that life is eternal and that love cannot die. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, may we reflect your love in our families, our church and our community. And in doing so, show everyone we meet that we are followers of Christ with a true desire to draw them into our Christian faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand if you are able? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's share that now peace with each other and with those at home as well. We'll raise the peace there as well. <laughs> Still can't come. <laughs> As we come to communion now, we sing number three, creation sings. 
It's in the hymn book 109 on the screen. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, 
through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, his body and his blood. So in the same act that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel to pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus, and risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. To eat and drink in a moment till he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith. Thanksgiving. Body of Christ broke.
We've had a slight hiccup, if you could pause for a moment. Thank you. Body of Christ broken for you. The 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 body of Christ broken. Body and blood of Christ will become for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you. Body of Christ broken for you. The body. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ, the body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ.
O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot under comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love. Give us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you are set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth lifts to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to the church wants Um, you've got the details on the back of your notice sheets this week, but the next Saturday morning the hospice choir are holding a coffee morning combined with the URC church down at URC from 10 till 12 on Saturday morning and it's a sort of a mixture of we sing for a quarter of an hour and then you have a 10 minute rest where you can chat and then we sing for another quarter of an hour it's a one pound to come in and that gets you your cup of coffee so any support would be lovely and on oh there will be stalls cake stalls and all the usual yes um on Sunday afternoon you can be entertained by Lizzie's choir here at half, half three um and there will be cups of tea after that on July the 7th, in fr on Friday evening, it's the school barbecue where we will be doing the cakes and the jam jar game and splat the rat. So any offerings of cakes and support for selling, please, that would be brilliant. Um, July the 15th is Messy Church um, in the afternoon and then at 5.30 it's followed straight away by the Benefice Barbecue in the Vicarage Garden. Um, the first Friday of July it will be Cameo here. And please, if Sue's given you anybody any any plant pots, please can we give her the plant pots back, having taken the contents out? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And it's craft tomorrow, Beryl says. <laughs> Is it ten o'clock? Yes. Craft club. I didn't hear what that was. Craft club. With all that in mind, therefore, let's move to a final hymn. Number 67, Teach Me to Dance, and those who wish to use their legs are welcome to do so. <laughs> Presence, teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. 
Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope. And the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.